never before witnessed in the history of our country has now marred our national image. Being a Democrat, I tried all I could by persuasion and human reason to avert this development. I did so because I was convinced that once permitted a demonstration promotive of either side of the alleged issue of the price of price would before long to be orderly. The issue, my fellow citizens, cannot be that of the price of rice, for I've made myself completely clear on this issue. First of all, only recommendations, as yet not decided upon, have been advanced by my Minister of Agriculture. Since these recommendations were made, and in view of the significance of this commodity to our national diet, Government has been endeavoring to give serious consideration, taking into full account a series of expressed concerns, not to mention the debate within the Council of State. The Cabinet Committee is now actively at work, and suggestions from concerned citizens are still being welcomed. I have unequivocally stated, and are now emphatically restated, that when the final determination is made on the issue, it will embrace the interests of producers and consumers of this commodity and will include as well the vital long-term interests of the broad masses of our people. In spite of our position on this issue, reasonable as it is, clearly stated and explained to the citizens in an atmosphere of democratic interaction between government and government, a group of individuals came forth and requested permit for a demonstration on the identical issue. Government invited the, issue, the individuals in an attempt to effect a meeting of the minds. True to our firm faith in democracy, the exchange was free and frank. We re reiterated our assurance that the matter was continually under advisement, that we would still welcome any new suggestions, and that at the end of the day, only the supreme interest of the people would prevail in the matter. So we were again informed that in spite of all that had transpired, the demonstration would still proceed in total defiance of the laws of Liberia and duly constituted authority. Notwithstanding the fact that they had been denied a permit, when requested, and this information has been repeatedly brought to their attention. As I have sworn, as your president, to defend the Constitution and enforce the laws of the Republic of Liberia, I had to discharge those sacred responsibilities in defense of the nation and its people. In the many occasion by a defiant and illegal demonstration, the most tragic misfortune occurred of 
the death of some of my precious and promising citizens and wounding of a number of others, all of this with the attendant development of damage to millions of dollars worth of property. Had government not exercised restraint, there may have been even more casualties. I'm deeply hurt and aggrieved by this national tragedy, and I extend preliminarily in this manner my sincere sympathy and profound regrets to the affected families. In the midst of this great and unprecedented national tragedy, I solemnly call upon all of my people, the people of the Republic of Liberia, to fully realize that they are in fact a united people and that their interests and welfare can best be attended in an atmosphere of condensed solidarity as they make peaceful adjustments to changing realities in their march towards higher heights. To attain this noble and desirable end, there must be law and order in the land. I repeat, to attain this noble and desirable end, there must be law and order in the land. And it has been this legitimate concern which has guided our actions. Accordingly, we'll continue to be guided thereby. For we'll never abdicate our sacred trust to the chaotic propensities of evil-minded individuals who pursue their selfish interests under the guise of seeking the people's welfare. How else can one characterize the chaos on which by such individuals which has led to the very un-Liberian acts of hoodlum tactics, of looting and destruction of property of our own people and our foreign partners in development. Am I to conclude that my government's policy of encouraging the exercise by all of their fundamental human rights has been used by these few anarchists to sow in our midst the seeds of discord, confusion, destruction, and death? I appeal to you, my people, to become real Liberians once again. Liberians who follow a wise and time-tested tradition of continuity and change as they walk the pathway of national development and progress. My fellow citizens, as you very well know, since I became your leader by the grace of God and your freely exercised choice, I have been laboring even at the peril of my life to bring development to the masses of our people. I have gone into the outer reaches of our country where reside the majority of our people. I have given a rural trust to my domestic policy in the interest of equity and balanced growth and development. There is ample proof that we have achieved an appreciable measure of success, but there remains much more to do. And with our hands firmly at the plow, we have no intention whatsoever of turning back. To the contrary, we must surge forward with unshakable faith in God and full confidence in ourselves. But we can hardly proceed thus if we allow habits and attitudes contrary to our way of life to direct our action and sully our national reputation. With sobriety of judgment, therefore, and true to our Liberian tradition of loving and caring for each other as though we were all one big family, which I believe we in fact are, I call upon all of you to ever be controlled by a sense of patriotism, loyalty, commitment, and dedication to this land, which we all love so dearly and must consequently defend at the peril of our lives. On this happy Easter day, let us all assemble in our respective places of worship and with noble virtues and godly principles resurrected in our lives, worship in thanksgiving and adoration the Prince of Peace, whose glorious resurrection we triumphantly celebrate. Let us all return to our respective vocations and labor with renewed faith, courage, determination, and self life so that thereby we may bring unabating progress and development to our beloved country. Our collective self-fulfillment and our sacred obligation to posterity require of us this full measure of identification and solidarity. 
I call upon our partners in progress and foreign residents in our midst to remain calm and rest assured that government will spare no effort to ensure their safety and security. And she's, as she strives unceasingly to help occasion a truly wholesome functioning society for our one world, may Almighty God continue to prosper the works of our hands. Save God our... That's the point, sir. Yes, I told the Lord to the right to to defend their property. You, you, you got your, your, your house. Somebody go in there. You got to defend it. Defend your property in keeping with the laws of our land. And people found looting and, and, and breaking up stores will be, <coughs> will be arrested. And if, they, if, if there is no possibility way of arrest, if they resist arrest, they will be uh, uh, fired upon. You understand? If they resist arrest and don't permit themselves to be arrested, Orders have been given them to be fired up to protect the lives and poverty of people. All that to fight. Hmm? Or if you don't want spies to 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 disable, to disable them as appropriately as the circumstances demand. Yes. Huh? Yes. To disable them. We call upon the people to, be, to, to take appropriate measures to defend their property. Proud to defend their property. Well, okay. Huh? Because right. yeah, <coughs> nobody will sit down and let somebody go in their place helplessly and take their things out. Oh. by the president of Liberia. This is ELWA, your good friend station, transmitting from Monrovia, Liberia. It's now 15 minutes after 12 o'clock.